The rate law is a mathematical relationship between the rate of a reaction, the rate constant, which we abbreviate little k, and the concentration of all of the reactants in the reaction. For a generic reaction like AA plus BB makes DD and EE, and in this notation, the little letters I am using to indicate the stoichiometric coefficients in the balanced equation, and the big letters I'm using to indicate the molecular formulas. If we wanted to write the rate law for, for this type of generic reaction, it would look like this. We would say the rate of the reaction is equal to the rate constant, little k. And remember, the rate constant is specific to a chemical reaction. It's not a constant like Avogadro's number. Um, the rate constant k times the concentration of all of our reactants. So you know, putting it in square brackets, that's notation that we use to indicate the molarity of that substance. This means the molarity of molecule A. Um, and brackets B means the molarity of B. So it's the concentration of all of the reactants, A and B. And these concentrations are raised to some exponent, which I'm just going to say X and Y. These exponents, x and y, notice I'm not using the same numbers uh, or the same letters as the stoichiometric coefficients because they are not necessarily going to be the same. Um, so let's kind, of, let's kind of mark some of these things up. k is our rate constant, which we determine experimentally, or it's a number that's given to you. a and b are the molarities, the concentrations. I've already got that written down. Um, and then X and Y, these are numbers that are experimentally determined uh, and they have nothing to do with stoichiometry. So they are not the coefficients, although sometimes the values of these x and y, these exponents, sometimes they are the same values as stoichiometric coefficients. So sometimes it's confusing for students because they want to try to draw some sort of relationship between these numbers, uh, and there, there isn't one. They are not the coefficients from the equation. The um, exponents, x and y, and if we had another term out here, like if there was a third reactant, we would say that that had, we could say that that had a power of z. These exponents are um, used to determine what we call the order of the reaction. The order of the reaction is just simply the sum of these exponents. in the rate law. So let's say, for example, let's say that we had a rate law that was rate equals k times, let's say, f squared, or sorry, f2, f2, clo2. Let's say that this was our rate law. In this particular rate law, the value of x, which is this exponent right here, the value of x is 1, and the value of y is also 1. Remember, y is the exponent here. So, you know, when we write no number at all, it's just a 1. So the order of this particular rate law is 1 plus 1, which is a 2, and we call this a second order reaction. If the sum of the exponents would be a one, like maybe there was just one term in the rate law and there was just one exponent of one, we would call that a first order reaction. If we had, if one of these was a two, our order would be one plus two, which is three, we would call that a third order reaction. We're also gonna find that it's possible for these exponents to be zeros, which is kind of weird. And that we would call a zero order reaction. Another thing that we, another notation that we use, another thing that we can say um, is that we can describe the order of reaction specific to each one of the reactants. So we could say that this overall is a second order reaction, and we could also say that it is first order with respect to, I'm going to abbreviate that, first order with respect to F2, and it's also first order 
with respect to, with respect to ClO2. So that's referring to the individual exponents for F2 and the individual exponent for ClO2. If this was a 2, we would say it's second order with respect to ClO2. If this was a 0, we would say it's zero order with respect to F2.